on a photographic trip in Utah, and Fuji called me and said that they'd like to give me an X-Pro2 to really put it through its paces. I couldn't wait to get back to Toronto because they wouldn't send one to me. My name is Spencer Wynn. I'm a photographer in Toronto. I come from a visual journalism background. I've been using Fuji now exclusively for the last three years. Discovering the Fuji X100 and its form factor and the X-T1 and its ability to change lenses, that really changed the way I shoot and the way I will always shoot. One of the most significant moments in really becoming interested in photojournalism and documentary photography is traveling in Western China. I'm an outsider anyway. I don't look like anybody in the area. With a smaller camera and not as much gear, you can fade away into the background. After a while, they just don't notice you. And that was an epiphany, that you could actually stand out but fade away at the same time. It allowed me to get a lot closer to the subjects and tell a more intimate story of who they were. The X-Pro2 is a camera that will never leave my side now. I take it everywhere I go. Ergonomically, for a right-handed shooter, all the buttons and the dials are arranged on the right side of the camera. And I'm the kind of guy who just never looks at the dials, but really needs that muscle memory to know where those buttons are. And they're intelligently positioned and within the range of your fingers, you don't have to overreach. What I love about this camera is that the build quality is very solid. It's got some weight to it, but not too heavy. In the past, with smaller cameras, they've got a plastic feel. They're a bit delicate. You'd be afraid, perhaps, of maybe dropping it or knocking it against something, but I've dropped this camera a few times, not too far, uh, and it is felt very solid and it sounded solid and it's built that way, it's built for professional use. The grip on the camera is not too big, which I like. It just fits my hand perfectly. The one thing that is a really great addition is the joystick on the back because you can just toggle around like that and that does many functions. I'm a totally manual focus person. Everything is manual for me. So if I've got it locked down on a scene and I need to sort of focus on one very small point, because it now has 273 focus points, I can really finally just jog that focus point over using the joystick until it's exactly in the right place. The new sensor in this camera is 24 megapixels, so your photographs are a lot larger. The new processor allows for a greater dynamic range and really great rendition of color. One of the real surprising elements of this X-Pro2 is the quality of the JPEGs. The JPEGs that you would get out of this camera are astoundingly sharp, especially now with Reuters asking its photographers just to supply and shoot in JPEG. Photo clubs, contests, National Geographic, they don't want overprocessed, just a light touch on a JPEG. And you can feel confident now supplying those JPEGs the files are huge and allow a lot more latitude in light and exposure. One of the things that I really truly love about landscape photography is that there's more than just 12 hours of the day that you can shoot. Shooting at night is something that I do a lot of. I'm very comfortable with it. So when I got the X-Pro2, I hopped on a plane to northern Canada and spent a week shooting at night, minus 18, minus 20. And the photographs that came out of that were astoundingly sharp. The noise level on this camera is very, very low. There's very little you have to do. You can shoot at higher ISOs and really be confident that you'll get very fine images. This is Fuji's first camera with dual card slots. It extends my shooting without having to change cards, but it also allows for a bit of file management. You can write JPEGs to one and RAW to another, or you can program it in the menu to shoot JPEG and RAW continuously, so you can use it as backup and feel confident that you've got everything, nothing's going to happen. With a mechanical shutter speed of a maximum of 8 thousandth of a second, you can really stop down the light to achieve that shallow depth of field. On the electronic shutter, you can get 32 thousandths of a second, which would really help if you want that shallow depth of field, even on a really bright sunny day. This camera really pushes the DSLR further back in the rear view mirror. 
it will do everything you want it to. From a journalistic point, from a documentary standpoint, fine art photography, it's got everything you would want.